We'd like to take this time tonight and ask Mount Zion, if you will, let's especially make all of our visitors welcome tonight. Appreciate them coming. Been a good representation every night, different ones from different areas. We have some tonight uh, from Sampson County. We have some tonight all the way from Mount Airy, North Carolina. Good to have them with us. And uh, just different areas. Bladenboro's been with us about every night near about. Praise God. We're just so glad for all the people that's here that lives on the territory. Amen. Right around here in Pembroke area. We're glad to have you tonight. Praise God. Uh, Brother Charles Bell is going to come and sing us a song tonight, asking the ushers to get ready, if you will. We'd like to lift our offering, and everything's given to the evangelists this week. Thank you for what you've already given. Those that uh, spent time with the evangelists today, some from the church, I think took them for lunch, and uh, we appreciate that so very much. Asking the folks also, when Brother Charles gets through singing, from Mount Airy, maybe they could get us a song together tonight and sing for us when Brother Charles is done. Amen. Asking Brother Frankie Demery, would you stand and bless the offering for us tonight? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. It's good to see Brother Buck with us tonight. He's one of our breakfast friends. We eat breakfast there at the cafe, and which he's been here before, kin to some of the people. Good to have him with us tonight. Amen. Obey the Lord, Brother Bell. Good to have you tonight. How many tonight would like to get a genuine blessing? I know I would. As old saying, you know, we get out of it what we put in it. Amen, brother. And uh, I know if we'll do our part, the Lord will do his. So uh, grab them tambourines. Let's have church.
Amen. He's worthy. I want to do that especially for uh, Sister Bowen, Bowen and her husband. And Brother David wants to know what I'm singing at the rest song. We got one tomorrow. So check with me, Brother David, and we'll talk about it. Amen. Praise the Lord, Brother Charles. Thank God for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Feel like traveling on, don't you? <laughs> Mount Airy, folks. Praise the Lord. I don't know what y'all think about when y'all think about Mount Airy, but you know what a lot of people think about when you think about Mount Airy. Amen. But we we glad to know some people from Mount Airy. Praise God. Y'all come on and sing for us tonight, if you will. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God. If you've never been to Mount Airy, I've been to their church. If you up in the mountains and you're visiting the Andy Griffith town, go to church and be with these fine people up at Mount Airy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let me hear it again. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you. That sounds good. I'd like to thank God for what he had done. That's my husband right there. And he gave his life to the Lord in December. And I thank God for that. Praise God. Thank God is good. You know, sometimes we got to give ourselves everything to God. 
and let God take care of them. We're trying to do it ourselves, but we can't do it. But we got to give it to the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we came tonight, praise God, to hear the word. Praise God. And I thank God for everything. He's been so good to me. Praise God. He saved me. He brought me out of things, praise God. And I thank God and I give him all the glory and all the praise tonight. Praise God. Just get into it. Put your mind on Jesus. Because that's what we come here tonight. To worship. Worship our God.
Appreciate that wonderful singing tonight. Certainly, Jesus wants to use us. Don't you believe that? He's got a work for every one of us. But in order for him to use us, we've got to surrender ourselves to him. Give ourselves to him. Hallelujah. It's one thing he made us with a free choice. And we have that choice to decide. Are we going to live our life selfish? For ourselves, or are we going to give ourselves to our Maker? Praise God, the one that give us our life tonight. Praise the Lord. I'd like to say tonight, Sister Baltman gets ready to come, brings the word of the Lord. We're so thankful for their ministry, and I don't think Brother Baltman minds me saying his age tonight. I think it's a miracle. Almost 87 years old, and he's driving his wife all over the country amen they preaching the word of god isn't that wonderful i hope the lord just continues just to bless them year after year and they're able to continue the work of god amen thank god come right on sister and obey the lord good to have you hallelujah well, he may do the driving, I do the navigating. <laughs> There's two sets of brakes in that automobile. I just haven't found how to use mine to get it to stop. No, he's a good driver. He really is. God has blessed us, and we're so thrilled to be here. I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to live for Jesus. It's the happiest life you can have. Even in the sad times, even in the down times, even in the sick times, it's the best life we can live, living for Jesus. And I appreciate this revival, what it's meant to us. Thank you, Brother Smith, Sister Smith, and Mount Zion Church for having us come be here. Thank you for those that have prayed for me. My voice is so much better. It's not completely uh, back to par, but it is so much better, and I appreciate that, and I thank God for your prayers. Thank you for your offerings. Amen. We give him the glory for it, don't we? Amen. Thank you for the accommodation. So good to see so many of our friends, and some of you have been here already. Some of you, this is your first night, but I'm so glad that you could come, wanted to come. I think about it like this. We never know when this may be our last time of opportunity or even help to be able to go to God's house and to do our part to worship his name and to obey him. My prayer for everyone tonight is that you won't leave you like you came in Jesus name that he will minister to you and meet your need and answer your prayers. If you have your Bibles look in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I want to read what Paul said as he wrote to young Timothy. In this writing, Paul is writing his final letter to this young minister. And he was his son in the Lord. Paul called him that, him, called him his son in the Lord. And he's charging Timothy and he's urging Timothy to be faithful and to keep standing for the word. Uh, that's recorded in verses 1 through 5. Then Paul's about to leave. And he talks about his departure. His work is almost over. And he has no regrets. That's in verses 6 through 8. But I'll start reading in verse 9. Chapter 4 of 2 Timothy, verse 9. Paul writes to him and he says, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed into Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Titus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee. 
and the books, but especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou where also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. I want to use that 17th verse and probably won't preach something you ministers haven't already preached or shared uh, some time or other in your ministry. Verse 17, where Paul, after he had said all that was taking place, he said, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. And I want to talk to us tonight on, Lord, stand by me. Lord, I need you to stand by me. Paul gives a description of what is taking place in his life as he's writing this letter. He said, Demas was with me, but he forsook me. He left me because he loved this present world more than he loved Jesus and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christus has gone to Galatia. Titus has gone to Dalmatia. Only Luke is left with me. Then he said, Alexander the coppersmith has done me much evil. He said, you beware of him. You watch him and observe and don't be overtaken by him. He said, at first, no one stood with me, but he prayed for God not to lay the blame or the charge to them. He didn't want them to have to be punished for that. He had no animosity in his heart. Now, all of this is taking place in Paul's life at this present time. But he said, I came through all of that, even the withstanding of Alexander the coppersmith, and even in times past, and I don't have time, uh, I didn't take time to write down all that Paul had been through in his lifetime from his conversion until now at the latter part of his life. It might have taken page after page because he made mention of it. And I believe it in, it's in Acts writings how that he'd been shipwrecked and had been beaten with rods and all the things that came against his life. Paul didn't have it easy. When we read about him and we see how God used him and how God worked with him, we think, oh, I, I wish I could be a Paul or I could be like Paul. I wish that God would perform miracles from my efforts and my prayers like he did for Paul. Well, Paul gave up everything so that he could be. As they sang the song tonight, he gave himself away. He gave himself completely to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to think with me. I'll get into my thought here. But I want you to think with me back even prior to Paul's conversion. Paul was so full of religion and he believed he was right in how he lived. He believed he was right in his thoughts and his actions so much that when Christ came on the scene, he did not believe that he was the Messiah. He would not accept that he was the Son of God. He would not believe it, and he fought everyone that would accept it so much that he consented to have them beaten and have them persecuted, have them placed in prison, and even consented to some of their lives to be taken. He was so convinced that he was right. Can I just say this and move on with my thought? We can be as sincere as anyone can be. And we can believe earnestly as anyone can believe that we are right and still be deadly wrong. Paul was wrong. 
and no one could convince Paul that he was wrong. His name was Saul at that time. No one could convince him, not even when they laid their coats at his feet and they had Stephen, that first martyr, out there and they were stoning him to death. And he stood there and he watched that godly man die. It never fazed him. I still believe I'm right. I still believe that I should persecute this church and these that are following Jesus Christ. We have some of them in the world today. They are deceived and they're deceiving others. Well, how do you keep from being deceived, Sister Linda? If you don't know by now as a Christian, I'll tell you if you don't know, you get that word of God down. And you begin to pray, Lord, give me understanding of knowing how to live for you, of knowing what you are pleased by and what you're not pleased by and what you will accept and what you won't accept. God does not accept just any old thing. I said God does not accept just any old thing. He has a word that you and I all must live by. It's not just for the American people. It's for the Greek. It's for the Jews. It's for the Hebrews. It's for all nationalities. We must all come by the word of God. Well, what's going to happen to this group over here that's teaching contrary to the word of God? Or what's going to happen to that group over there that doesn't even believe in Jesus Christ? It's already recorded in the word of God. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'll tell you, they'll never get to the heavenly Father, so they'll never get to the throne room where he is if they do not come by Jesus Christ. I am not judging them. I'm telling you what the book tells you and I. We must come by the way of Calvary, the shed blood of Jesus. Paul, believing he was right in what he was doing, persecuting the church, has papers in his pocket, so to speak, on the road to Damascus to take more and have them persecuted and have maybe their lives taken when Jesus out of heaven. Can I just, uh, just imagine a little bit right here? Will you indulge me with my imagination? I can't prove this with scripture, but I do know there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And they're the Godhead. They're all in one. Amen. I just imagine that they got together and they begin to have a discussion. Said that man Paul is educated. That man Paul is one that once he is convinced, it's hard to change his mind. I believe if we could just get his attention, if we could just get him looking in our directions, if we could just show him something, do something to convince him that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God and the way of salvation, I believe that will be a great tool in our hands. I believe we can use him mightily. And sure enough, God said, okay, what are we going to do? He said, we're going to send a, a light down out of heaven. It's going to be brighter than the noonday sun. And it's going to blind his eyes to the natural. So all he's got is his hearing. I feel the Holy Ghost sometimes God has to let things come our way to humble us down, to get our attention. Brother Baltman was backslid on God for 25 years and when his first wife died suddenly with a massive heart attack at 48 years of age, it got his attention. Are you hearing what I'm preaching? It took her life to get his attention or God used that to get his attention. And when God let that bright light shine down on that Damascus road and blinded him, he spoke to him and he heard him clearly. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who art thou, Lord? I want to know who's talking to me. He said, I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest. I'm the very one that you're kicking against and you need him more than you need anything this world can give you. I'm telling you tonight, I'm glad for a Jesus that will be a Lord to us, not just a Savior, but a Lord. Paul didn't need just a Savior. He needed a Lord, and he made him Lord of his life. 
I'm glad for my Lord tonight. Does anybody know who I'm talking about? Will you raise a hand and tell me what his name is? Jesus. Jesus is his name. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the Deliverer. Jesus is the Healer. Jesus is the Waymaker. Jesus is the Great I Am. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus is everything to that Christian that's devoted to him. He is everything to that life. Does anybody love him tonight? Why don't you love him a little while? Oh, praise be to God. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. But from his conversion, he started right then. When he, his eyesight was given back to him, after Ananias prayed for him, he started preaching the gospel and spreading the gospel. And many didn't want to accept him because they said, we've heard about this man. We know how mean he is. We know how he's persecuted the church. We know how that he will not accept Jesus Christ. Oh, they said, but he's not the same man. What did y'all sing to us while ago? It's different now. I believe if Paul had thought about it, he might have written that song before that writer did. But oh, it's different now. I used to be like that, but I'm not like that anymore. I used to live like that, but I don't live like that anymore. I used to act like that, but I don't act like that anymore. I used to love that, but I don't love that anymore. I used to go there, but I don't go there anymore. I used to talk like that, but I don't talk like that anymore. Oh, it's different now since Jesus saved my soul. It's different now since he made me whole. Does anybody want to praise him one more time? My, my, my. Paul, great man of God. We can name miracle after miracle God used him in and worked through him and souls were won and demons were cast out from the life that Paul lived from his obedience and dedication and faithfulness to God. You want a life like Paul? Get dedicated like Paul. Live like Paul. Pray like Paul. Sacrifice like Paul. And God will use you. I said, God can and will use you. But it said now, uh, he's been through all the persecution. I got to get to my thoughts. On he's been through all that persecution, shipwreck, hungry, cold, and nakedness and perils. And the list could go on and on. But you never, ever find one word in the Bible where Paul got down and said, I'm quitting. I'm just tired of this. I've sacrificed everything for these people, and they don't seemingly care a thing about me. That kindly goes right along with pastors. Oh, my, don't get quiet on me now. You do everything for me and steal some of them. Don't give a flip about you. Oh, I better quit meddling, keep on preaching, amen. You don't ever find where Paul said, I think I'll th throw in the towel. I think I'll just see if I can't get on social security and retire at an early age. You don't find where Paul said, I am sick and tired of praying for people that don't want to seemingly, seemingly get up. But Paul held on to God. You find Paul and Silas in a Roman jail and their backs are beaten to a bloody mess. But oh, in that Roman jail, they're not whining and complaining and fussing and griping and finding fault and pointing fingers at somebody. They said, why don't we just sing praises to God and pray a little while. We may not can preach, but we can pray and we can sing. You say, I'm not a preacher. You can pray and you can sing. Well, I'm not a good singer. You can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Lord God, do something and to lift up that name that is holy and high and lifted up. Do something to let him know he's the dearest friend you've got. Let him know that you have made him your all. Hallelujah. He's gone through that persecution. And now it's down to the end of his journey. He said, young Timothy, I'm leaving you with a charge. He said, before God and before the Lord Jesus Christ, who judges the quick and the dead 
at will at his appearing. He said, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Paul did that, amen. And he's passing it on to young Timothy. Can I say something? This is no reflection against youth by no means. But I'm finding amongst some of the youth that want to vary from the word of God. They don't want it like the old timers gave it to them. And like the old timers got that revelations from the word of God they want a new revelation they want an insight nobody else has ever had but Paul never said that to Timothy he said you preach the same gospel that I preach to you you tell them the same doctrine that I gave to you you live the same life that I live before you oh he said but after their own lust he said the time will come they won't endure sound doctrine but after their own lust, they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they'll turn away their ears from the truth and turn unto fables. But watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. He had time to admonish a young man. And let me rewind. There are so many good young ministers out there preaching the same word. I'm not lumping all of them in the same category there are young preachers coming along and dear God I pray for them that there will be men and women that will stand strong for God and carry this gospel on even long after I'm gone if Jesus takes me first I want this gospel to go I don't care who carries it I don't care whether they can read their name in boxcar letters I don't care if they can pronounce names correctly or not I don't care if their vocabulary is not the very best just preach the word of God to people to a lost and dying world after he admonished Timothy he said I'm ready to be offered the time of my departure is in hand I fought a good fight I have finished my course and I have kept the faith and because I have because I've done that there's a laid up a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. I'm ready to go. I have no regrets. I believe Paul, he didn't write it. I believe he could have said it. I'd do it all over again just to be where I am, just to see what I see up ahead, just to know where I'm headed, just to know what I'm going to have in a little while. I'd do it all over again. And that's the way I feel about it. God called me to preach in 72. And I thank God for the calling. It's been a holy calling on deserving I am unworthy I am but ever so grateful that God saw something in me he wanted to use but can I tell you I've had my valleys I've had my battles I've had my opposition I've had my hurts I've had my pains I've had my criticism I've had people that wouldn't even shake my hand that said they love Jesus I've had people tell others that I wasn't living a holy enough life for them or for God but let me tell I do it all over again. I do it all over again. Woo, hallelujah. I said I do it all over again. I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I've got to make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me and it tries to turn me aside. Woo, got to make it. Brother Taylor, we got to make it. Wouldn't we be crazy? to give up now? Wouldn't we be crazy to turn loose of God now? Wouldn't we be crazy not to fight on until we make it across that finish line? Woo! Paul said, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, but he wanted to encourage that young Timothy. He said, listen, and I read all that. This is where he is. Demons forsake him. Others are gone away. He only has Luke with him. And he's been withstood by Alexander the coppersmith. He said, at my first answer, no man stood with me. I was all by myself. You 
mind me using you? Would you be right there and be Paul for me? He said at my first answer, no man stood with me. He's all by himself. Would you just step out a little bit toward the congregation? There you go, right there. Amen. He's going to tell me what Bert tells me. He said, Linda, I can't read your mind. He didn't know I wanted him to step out of here. He's all by himself. He said, at first, no one stood with me. He said, but I'm not hurting them. I have no animosity against them. I'm not offended by that. Can I just use you? You don't mind me touching him as your husband. I don't mind being alone because I know how I've lived. I know who I've served. I know who is Lord over my life. I may be alone, but he's somewhere around here. He's somewhere around here. Because I've already found it in the word of God. He said, I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. I found it in the word of God. That I'll go with you all the way. Even to the end. I'm here. Just look around. Just look around. Stay right there in that spot. Just look around. He's looking for the Lord. He's looking for the Lord. He can't seem to see him. He can't seem to touch him. can't seem to find him. He said, at first, I'm all by myself. I pray God that he won't lay any charge to them. But all at once. Come on, Brother Chris. Just stand there. Come on. You're going to represent the Lord. Paul looks over there, and there's God. The Lord standing right beside him. I knew he was here. I just didn't know when he was going to show up. I knew I could feel after him and I could find him. Sometimes we have to. <laughs> Said the Lord stood with him. Amen. The Lord stood with him to be present and to remain ready. To act if needed or required after. To support it. Listen now. To remain faithful to someone is to stand by someone. Yeah, it, Brother Chris, you can just turn around and look at the congregation. Stand there right beside. That's good. Anybody ever had someone to forsake you? You don't have to raise your hand unless you want to if you want to. You ever had somebody you thought would be there for you and they forsook you? You thought they loved you enough they'd stay there with you? You thought they cared enough that they'd never abandon you? You thought they loved you enough they'd never hurt you? Even if you didn't raise your hand, sir and ma'am, you've been hurt sometime or another by somebody. And I'll just go ahead and say it. It's a deeper hurt when it comes from supposed to be Christians. I expect it from that world, but I expect better out of a child of God. I expect that world to act like that, but I expect a Christian to act like Christ with love and compassion. Amen. Oh, my. Uh, the Lord stood with him. He stood there to present himself to him and to remain ready. He remained ready, Brother Chris. Are you ready? If Paul needs you, are you ready? If Paul reaches out to you, are you ready to remain faithful? The Lord's special nearness is declared in Psalms 46 and 1. It said, God is, that's present tense at all times. God is our refuge and strength, a very present, right now ready, help in trouble. Oh, the Lord was right there ready. The Lord was present to help Paul. The Lord was present to minister to Paul. Psalms 145 and 18 said, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. Not just call upon him, but to all that call upon him in truth. You've got to be honest with God. I said, we've got to be honest with God. We cannot pretend if we want what God's got. We've got to be honest with God. 
Hello? And we can't have things and pretend everything's all right when it's not. He said he would be near that one that calls upon human truth. Deuteronomy said in chapter 4, verse 7, For nation is there no nation so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God and all things that we call upon him for. He was right there. The Lord stood with him. The Lord stood by him. Hallelujah. And you won't find another God, no matter who's, who's na uh, what name it carries, whether it's a human that's dead and gone, or whether it's some statue or some image or some figure of a being, a creature, you will find no other God that can stand with you and be there for you. When the tsunami hit Indonesia, and I saw the video on the newscast, of those people fleeing from that flood water, coming in from that tidal wave, from that tsunami. There was one man had this big old a statue up under his arm. That was his God. He was trying to save himself and his God. Our God doesn't need saving. We need it saving. He carries us. We don't carry him. He protects us. He helps us. He ministers to us. Oh, he is not unto them that are his children. He said he stood with me, but that's not all. He said the Lord strengthened me. He reinforced me. He made me stronger by his additional assistance. Ooh, hallelujah. Sometimes we feel our strength, don't we? Now, me as a woman, I can't fight, fight my way out of a wet paper bag, so I don't have a whole lot of physical strength. Amen. But, oh, sometimes, have you got any muscles? Show us your muscles. Stick it up there. He's got some strength. Amen. If you don't believe it, come here, Brother Baltman. Let him shake your hand. Show him how strong you are in that arm. Don't hurt him. He's my husband. Amen. Oh, he's showing his strength. But then there comes a time when that street's not enough because there's a storm raging and there's an opposing force that's trying to overpower you and overthrow you and push you down and push you aside. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost and tries to push you under. But that Lord that's standing right beside you reaches over and he pulls you up close. What do you feel? You feel his strength added to your strength. It doesn't deplete your strength or diminish your strength. He just adds his strength to it, something that you cannot produce on your own. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Come on, put your arm around and hold on to it. Hallelujah. I, I, you want to help me, brother? Hurry up. I hope you don't mind. You're going to be the devil. Hallelujah. And he looks and he sees his Paul. And he said, if I can put him out of operation, just think how much damage I would do to the kingdom of God if I could put him out of operation. Just think what it would mean to my kingdom. What glory I would have. Can I say this? Please listen to this. When you think about giving up after serving God, you're bringing a reproach on the name of Jesus. I said you're bringing a reproach on the name of Jesus. And not only that, those people that you have gained their confidence by living like you live and they see you go away, it makes them lose every bit of confidence and some of them may even lose confidence in God and never get right with God. My soul first, but all the souls that are out there watching me live the life I live. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But the devil knows if I, come on God, hold on to him, hold on to him. Hallelujah. And when he looks 
answered him and he wants to take you or, or him or he looks at you standing up over there and he wants to take you or he looks at you and he wants to take you or he looks at you and he wants to take you all you've got to do is recognize I've got my Lord standing by my side it's not my mind nor my power but it's by my spirit said the Lord of hosts are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So the enemy comes in like a mighty rushing wind. And the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, lifts up a standard against him and say, you can't have him. He's mine. You've got to back off. You've got to take flight. You've got to remove yours. My God, I feel heaven in this house tonight. You can't hold on to him. I've got him. He's, I'm not going to let go. And and he's not going to turn loose of me. Somebody love him. Somebody love him. Somebody say, Lord, stand by me. Say it again. Lord, stand by me. Lord, stand by me. Lord, Lord, stand by me. Lord, stand by me. I can't make it without you. I don't have the strength. I don't have the power. He's strengthening. God has special strength. Paul found that he did. And he wrote in, to the church at Philippi. In chapter 4, verse 13, he said, I, Paul, can do all things. But he didn't stop there. He tells how he's going to do it. Through Christ Jesus, which strengtheneth me. He's standing by me. Does anybody know he's standing right by you tonight? Does anybody feel his presence? Have you already reached out to fill him and say, I know you're here for me? Oh, he strengthened Paul. Then can I read in Corinthians to the church at Colossia? He said, Colossi, he said in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that were given me as a thorn, given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan above me, lest I should be exalted above measure. He said, I have been brought to revelations by the almighty God's power and spirit. He said, but God has given me a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I exalt myself up above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, and that it might depart from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength, my strength, whose strength? God's strength. God's strength. I'm not talking about Paul's strength here. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect or complete or entire, lacking nothing in your, and I'm inserting your weakness. Oh, when you're the weakest, that's when he's the strongest. Would you do me one more favor? Would you act like you're feeble and you can't hardly go? Would you, Lord, just hold him up? Amen. Would you just hold him up? He can't hardly make it. But in your weakness, uh, you're feeling the greater strength. Sometimes we whine and cry about feeling down and out or weak uh, or battling the devil. But in that time, that's when he's the strongest in you. That's when his strength is the greatest manifestation of all. It's not when we're running the backs of the pews. It's not when we're rolling in the floor. It's not when we're bouncing off the walls it's when we're weak and we lean on the Lord that is turning by us and he carries us when we cannot carry ourselves I'm almost finished thank you brother he said therefore he said most gladly therefore I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ 
may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong in Christ. Woo, hallelujah. You ever had somebody to ask you? I don't see how you do it. I see one nod and the rest of you aren't voting. I don't guess they have. Anybody else besides the one? Brother David said yes. I don't see how you do it. I don't see how you do it. Whatever it might be. It might be going to church. Over and over. Going to church when you don't even feel like it. I don't see how you do it. I don't see how you stay encouraged when you've lost this family member and this trouble's come your way and that problem has arisen. I don't see how you do it, how you can stand in church and raise your hands and love Jesus. I don't see how you do it when you got a smile on your face though your heart's been broken to a million pieces. We know how we do it, don't we? It's his strength. It's his strength. He stands with us. It's his strength. That's how we do it. And that's how we're going to continue to do it. It's in his strength. I mark this here. And I, I may have to quit right here. If I do, that's fine. Song in this book, I don't know if y'all sing it or not. But it said, when the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, Stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who rulest wind and water, stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. Will you say that after reading? In the midst of tribulation, in the midst of tribulation, when the host of hell assail and mass strength begins to fail, thou who ne never lost a battle, in the midst of faults and failures, in the midst of faults and failures, when I do the best I can and my friends misunderstand, thou who knowest all about me, Stand by me in the midst of persecution. In the midst of persecution. When my foes in battle array under, undertake to stop my way, thou who saved Paul and Silas. Last verse, when I'm growing, this is mine and Brother Bachman's. When I'm growing old and feeble. When I'm growing old and feeble when my life begin, becomes a burden and I'm nearing chilly Jordan oh thou lily of the valley stand by me stand by me Lord stand by me like you did in the fiery furnace when there were three Hebrew boys thrown in you were in the midst of the fire like you did the hour of hopelessness when the angel stood by Paul that night and said be of good cheer not one life will be lost like you did in the time of feeling alone and forsaken the disciples didn't know what to do after you'd been buried and resurrected and you appeared in that room and said it is I touch the nail prints and stick your hand in my side in the time of sickness like you did when you came to Peter's mother-in-law's bedside and stood by her and took her by the hand and raised her up in our time of departure from this life like oh uh, the, uh, Stephen was I mentioned earlier in Acts chapter 7 as he looked up into heaven and he saw you standing there in that glory world stand by us Lord we're nearing the end of the journey we don't ever know we don't ever know I already told you my nephew was only 64 years of age doctor just told him he was in perfect health doing good doing great said I'd have to go out of business if all my patients were like you that was just a couple of months. He had a lot of heart attacks. And then he had a major heart attack. He was at home. He 
passed out, his wife trying to get him to come to and could not resuscitate him, had already called 911. Called 911. When they got there, he was either dead or died with all the medical help available to him. We don't know. We don't know. But I want him to stand by me. And I'll draw my last breath. Can I tell this as they come? Who's going to sing and play? Would you come? I may have told this before. There was a Church of God preacher in Alabama years ago. The man was not Pentecostal, but the Lord dealt with his heart. He got saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. God called him to preach. Had a high salary job at a hospital. And when the Lord called him to preach, he called him to go full time into the ministry. He left every bit of that. Got a little Chinani travel trailer. Had two little babies. Had to make beds in the shower area because they had only one bed that was large enough for him and her. They travel all over Alabama, preach the gospel. That man was sold out to God. Never heard him complain. He'd come to little bitty churches like the one where I was saved, where he knew there was not going to be a lot of income and preach his heart out. I saw that man that had the windows that would swing out on each side of the center pane. The windows were out. We didn't have air conditioning and had the windows open. Men, mainly men, would stand outside and they would listen to the service. Cigarette smoke would drift into the building. You could smell alcohol. No one said a word to them because they wanted them to hear the word of God. Right. One night under the anointing, this pastor took his, he's about as tall as you are, brother, and he, he took that old long leg, stuck it out sideways out that window pane and went out. His body just barely went through. Next thing we know, he's coming in the door with a drunk man. I knew the drunk man all my life because he was born and raised in the community where I was from. He was so drunk, he was bumping the ends of the pews coming down. He brought him to the altar. Me as a young Christian girl standing up here, I'm watching. I was amazed. I loved to stand in the altars and watch God move and people shout and people worship and people cry and pray and I believe God had me there because he knew where he was taking me though I didn't know it that I would be in the ministry myself but I stood there and I watched God sober that man as he cried and prayed and God gloriously saved him brought his family to church and served God he was dedicated his wife got sick he came off the pastoral field and he took her home and said he was going to take care of her. He did till she passed away. Then his health began to decline. And his daughter, Ginger, said, Dad, you're going to have to come live with me. She carried him home with her, took care of him. His health declined rapidly, was in the bed, very low. Goes in that Sunday morning and he says, Ginger, I'm going home today. She said, Dad, you are home. You're home with me. You're living with me now. You are home. He said, you don't understand. I'm going home today. And about 12 o'clock, I think they said, I'm not sure about the timing. He leaned over with his head and he looked. He said, you see him, Ginger? He's come for me. She turned around. She said, Dad. I don't see anybody in this room but me and you. He said, oh, but he's here, and he's come for me. And said in just a little bit, he drew a few breaths, and he was gone. He stood by him. He stood by him. When he drew that last breath, Jesus was right there to escort him home to glory. You tell me we don't need Jesus to stand by us. We need Jesus to stand by us just to get through this life and all its turmoil, but we're going to need Jesus.
to stand by us. I want him right there. If my husband can't be there, he might be already gone. I hope not. I hope we go in the rapture. But if he can't be there, and mama won't be there because she's gone, daddy won't be there, only got one brother, he's got Parkinson's, and he's in very low state of Parkinson's right now. He may not be there, Brother Locklear, but I will know there'll be somebody there. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And I want him to stand by me. And I'm in the heat of the battle. Play. If you don't play, I'll preach another 30 minutes. <laughs> For there is no one that understands and sees and cares for you like I do. There is no one that will be as honest with you about your soul and your relationship with me like I will be. And there's no one that can give grace to help you to do what's right and to shun the wrong. But my grace is sufficient for you. No one can help you walk through those low places and climb those high, steep places but I can, and there's no one that can send help right in t at, t <coughs> at time like I can. Don't allow the fears and the torments of life to rob you of what I want to be for you and in you. Let me stand by you, and I can only do that when you have surrendered your total life and heart. To me, saith God. Thank you, Lord. Yes. For I have and I will be there for you. Even when you don't see me, feel me, or hear me, I will be there. All I need from you is that unwavering faith that will look up in my direction in that time of when you can't see, feel, or hear me and say, but I know you are with me. I know your help is right here to assist me and your strength will sustain me. I ask you be that individual so I can do it for you like I have for others, saith God. Oh, yes. For my commitment to you doesn't hinge upon what others think or say. No one can run me off. Satan cannot drive me away. Only when you pull yourself from me is there distance between you and I. For I am here to sustain you. I am here to even carry you when you're too weak to go. How can you not make it? with my help and my assistance, for you shall overcome by me, saith God. Oh, so. For I long to be intimate with you. I long to be your Savior, Lord, and Master. And then whatever else you need, I long to supply it. Surrender all and trust me with all of your heart. And watch me move on your behalf, even in your trying times, saith the Lord. Somebody raise your hand. Reverence the Holy Ghost. He has spoken. As she begins to place in whatever she feels to do, these altars are open. These altars are open. There's place here at the altar. There's place at the podium. There's place at the front pews. There's place up in the choir area. There's place here at the communion table. Anyone 
anyone want to pray? Anyone want to say, Lord, stand by me? Oh, I'm feeble. I'm weak. Oh, I'm struggling. Please stand by me. I may not have done everything right today, but stand by me and help me to get it fixed before I leave here. I may not be the strongest one in the sanctuary, but stand by me and help me make it with you. If you don't feel you want to come down front, would you make an altar where you are, bow your head, and just everybody across the sanctuary pray. If you don't have Jesus standing by you, you're missing out, son. Ma'am, sir, why don't you pray?